Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and in today's lesson we're going to talk about Ampere's Law. Our goals are going to be to state and apply Ampere's Law with symmetry arguments and the right hand rule in order to relate magnetic field strength to current for planar or cylindrical symmetries, and also to apply the superposition principle to determine the magnetic field produced by combinations of Biot-Savart and Ampere's Law configurations. So let's start by talking about what Ampere's Law is. Ampere's law provides an elegant method for finding the magnetic field due to current flowing in a wire in situations where you have planar or cylindrical symmetries. That's where it's useful, but what it specifically states is that the integral around any closed loop of the magnetic field dotted with dl, that's the dl around the loop, equals mu naught at permeability of free space times the current that penetrates that closed loop. As an example, let's take a look and assume, for example, that we have a magnetic field. Or let's put a wire here. Let's put a wire there with current coming out toward us. We know using the right-hand rule that we're going to have a magnetic field that we could sort of sketch in would look kind of like this. And at this point, the magnetic field points this way. Over there, it's in that direction and so on. So we actually just sort of draw it like that. That's going to be outside the wire. And if we want to know the magnetic field at a specific point, let's say that this has a radius r, and we could call a little bit of this loop dl. Well, when we do that now, the integral over the closed loop, and that can be any path. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle of b dotted with dl equals, well, in this case, because we have a circle, that's pretty easy to see that that's going to be b times 2 pi r, right? Just the distance around the circle, because b and dl are always in the same direction anywhere around that wire because of that symmetry. Well, we also, from our Biot-Savart calculations, our derivations in our last lecture, we know that the magnetic field strength due to a loop of wire is mu naught i over 2 pi r. So that means b times 2 pi r must be mu naught i. And i is the current that penetrates that loop. This works for any closed path. It's most useful when you have symmetries like a perfect circle around that. And we'll show you some examples. But Ampere's law, the integral over the closed loop of b dot dl equals mu naught times the current that penetrates that loop. So our first example, let's find the magnetic field outside a wire. And yeah, I know we already know how to do this, but let's walk through the formal of it, formalism of it to make sure we have the notation down and understand the concepts before we apply, a, uh, apply it to a more rigid, a more complex situation. So we've got a wire, we've got current coming through it, and it has some radius r. Find the magnetic field outside that wire. Well, let's start by drawing a diagram. Let's have it come face on at us. So there's our current, I. The wire itself, there's our wire. And we want to know the magnetic field outside it. So let's do that somewhere out here, outside the wire. So the white is the wire. The current is coming out of the wire toward us. And we know the radius of the wire itself is capital R. Let's call the radius to our point where we want to measure some point outside the wire, little r. We will have, along this wire, we'll have little bits of dl. We're going to chop it up. And we also know that the magnetic field strength anywhere along that is going to be in the same direction as dl. So there's our magnetic field. Applying Ampere's law, then, the integral over the closed loop of b dot dl equals mu naught times i. But this left-hand side again, outside, outside the wire, that's just going to be b times 2 pi times our little r. Right? There's our path, that blue loop, so b times 2 pi r, b dot dl is just going to be b times that length because they're in the same direction anywhere around on, anywhere on that path. And that must equal mu naught 
times the current that penetrates that surface, that closed loop. And then what penetrates that closed loop looks like it's just I. So B equals mu naught I over 2 pi R, which of course we already knew, but how much slicker a derivation is that compared to our BO sub R law? All right, let's see if we can't find out the magnetic field inside the wire. So our diagram is going to look similar at least. Let's have draw our current again coming out towards us and we'll put our wire around it. There's the wire itself expanded a little bit and we want to know inside the wire so I'm going to draw my path somewhere inside the diameter of our wire where now that is capital R and that is little r. Again our magnetic field B and DL are always going to be in the same direction because of that symmetry that we have there. So the integral over the closed loop of B dot DL equals mu naught times I penetrating. Okay, the left hand side again still as we go around that path it's just going to give us 2 pi r. So that's B times 2 pi r equals mu naught, but the current that's penetrating, well, that's going to be a little bit more work now. We've got this total current I that's being run through this wire. So if we take the ratio of our inner loop, this area, compared to the area of the entire loop, we should get the amount of current that's actually penetrating our blue loop here. So let's write that as, well, the area of our inner loop is going to be pi r squared, and our outer loop is going to be pi capital R squared. So we have the ratio of this area to that entire area and all of that multiplied by the total current. So we're just looking at the proportion of current that's going through this inner loop as opposed to what's going through the entire wire. All right, well, now it's just a matter of a little bit of algebra then to say that B equals mu naught I little r divided by 2 pi capital R squared. So there's the magnetic field inside the current carrying wire. All right, let's try one more. Let's see if we can't find the magnetic field in a solenoid. Calculate the magnetic field in the middle of a solenoid or a slinky using Ampere's law. And from a side view, if this is our current loop here in yellow, we're looking for the magnetic field inside it. Or a cross section here is the current is coming toward us up above and into the plane down below. We're looking for the magnetic field inside that loop. And we're going to assume that there is no magnetic field outside. So let's give ourselves a little space to draw here. So there we have our solenoid. And again, we're going to assume that we have B equals zero outside. So what I'm gonna do now is as I look over here, I'm going to draw a closed loop. And in this case, to make things simple, I'm gonna draw a closed loop that looks like that. We can use any closed loop. And let's assume that L is the total length of our solenoid. So then little l is this dimension. And let's just label the sides of our path here. We've got side one, side two, side three, and side four inside. And now we're gonna make a couple of arguments here. First off, loop two is outside, or the section of our path two is outside our solenoid where there's no magnetic field. So when we go to right, our Ampere's Law equation, integral over the closed loop of B dot DL equals mu naught I penetrating. If B is zero, that's all going to be zero. We don't have to worry about this section two. And also if we look at it, one and three, sections one and three, our angle's going to be 90 degrees. So when we do our dot product, that's going to come out to zero too. The only portion of the path we really have to worry about is here at four. 
that's going to make this a whole lot easier. So as I go through this, we also need to figure out the current that's penetrating. And the current penetrating, well, if this is little l and that's capital L, the current that's penetrating through that closed loop is going to be little l divided by capital L times the number of turns of wire that we have times the total current. So we're just taking the number of turns of wire times the total current and multiplying it by the ratio of what our closed loop covers compared to the total loop, assuming that the loop, loop spacing is uniform. That's a fair thing to do as well. So as we do our integration here, the left-hand side is just going to be B and the integral DL, B dot DL is just going to be BL. The right-hand side is going to be, well, we've got L over L N I times mu naught. Well, that's just going to be L over capital L, capital N, mu naught I. Or when I divide little L out of both sides, I find that we get a magnetic field strength inside our solenoid of capital N divided by L mu naught I. An application of Ampere's law where we're not using a circle, now we're using a square path, a rectangular path. And again, what made this so simple is that we didn't have anything we had to worry about with sides 1, 2, and 3. No magnetic field here. And at 1 and 3, B dot DL is going to equal 0 because theta is 90 degrees and cosine of 90 is 0, leaving us only path 4. All right, hopefully that gets you a good start on Ampere's Law as we're studying magnetism. As we go further and start uh, talking in a little bit more depth about Maxwell's equations, we're actually going to come back to Ampere's Law. And there's a little bit more to it. It gets a little bit more complex. But for now, that's a good start. And as we talk about electromagnetic induction later, we'll come back to it and revise it to uh, add in the last little tweaks. Thanks so much for watching. If you have more questions, need more help, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, everyone, and make it a great day.